you've constantly found yourself on the wrong side of the law when you're just minding your own business on your daily commute, you sir or ma'am may need a radar detector in your life. And when it comes to picking out a radar detector, you need to find a good one because if you have a bad one, you're gonna get a lot of false positives and then start ignoring it every time it goes off and then when that one time it actually goes off for the reason that you want it to, you're gonna ignore it and guess what? You get a ticket. So today we're actually looking at the Escort Max 360C, which is an upgraded model of the Escort Max 360, which is one of the best radar detectors available. Now this isn't only a radar detector, it's a 360 degree radar and laser detector with alert signaling arrows. So it's like top tier. Although one of the bad things with lasers in general is if this thing goes off because of a laser, you're already too late. That's just the way it is. Although, you know, depending on the cop, if you slow down, he might let you go. But obviously your mileage may vary. So if you're trying to protect yourself from lasers, you definitely need to get a laser jammer. That way they can't detect your speed with that laser. But the good news is most of the time they're not using lasers, at least not yet. So a radar detector should be sufficient. So when it comes to the range of this, it doesn't say exactly what the range is. Although I know the range is really far and definitely enough to give you a heads up when you're approaching a cop. The C in the name of the Max 360C actually stands for connected because this one upgrades over the Max 360 by being always connected all the time. Although to do that, you need to have a Wi-Fi hotspot available in your car. Whether your car's providing the connection, you have a little portable hotspot, or you're using your phone, you'll be able to get the most out of the detector. Although you can also connect the detector to your phone via Bluetooth and get some of the same experience. Although if you want to update the firmware on the detector, you do need to connect to Wi-Fi. So if you have this connected to your phone via Bluetooth or connected to Wi-Fi, it'll actually get crowdsourced alerts from other users. So if their detector detects a cop somewhere, it'll upload it to the cloud, download it to your device, so that way you get the heads up. It'll also download the posted speed limit on here and let you know if you're speeding in case you have a lead foot and you're not paying attention. I've done that so many times, saw a cop, I'm like, whoa, I'm speeding, what? I didn't even notice. It happens, especially if you're going downhill, and that's how they get you at the bottom of that hill. Remember, this is the Max 360C, 360 in the name, 360 degree alert. And that's all fine and dandy, but it takes it a step further by having directional arrows so it can tell you exactly where the signal's coming from. If it's in front of you, behind you, to the right, to the left, wherever it is, it'll let you know. We also have GPS intelligence, which rejects false alerts. So if you always drive by Walmart and their door is triggering this thing every time you're there, it'll automatically lock it out so next time you go there it won't be bugging you in the parking lot. Cause that's so annoying. I remember I had a detector that was super basic just because I wanted to get one without breaking the bank for my first detector, you know? And that thing went off so much every time I was in a parking lot, it was driving me nuts. And that right there, you know, false positives, you start ignoring and then when you need it, it goes off and you're not paying attention. It has a lightning fast response because remember, if this thing goes off, you need to be ready to act. Because remember, the faster this detects something, the faster you can react. Of course, you can connect to your car's Wi-Fi if it's supported or your phone to download updates as well as crowdsourced data. And then we have the Escort Live app which provides crowdsourced updates via Bluetooth on your phone. With the 360 degrees of detection, it does have forward and rear facing antennas to detect all the threats around you. It even features an IVT filter, which is an updatable system that automatically reduces false alerts from blind spot monitoring, cruise control, autopilot, that sort of stuff. Because every time you drive by a car that has their blind spot detectors on, this thing's gonna go crazy. It's good that it can block that out. Because remember, false alerts, make you not pay attention to real ones. Remember, it's Wi-Fi ready with a Defender database to keep you alert for updated speed cameras, red light cameras, speed traps, all that good stuff. And what's cool is you can even add your own locations. If you see a red light camera that's not on there, you can mark it so everyone else will know. Not only does it feature the 360 degree arrows, but it also has a multicolor OLED display so you can see what's going on. You can see which band is being detected. You can see which band is being detected. You can see the strength of it so you know how close you are to the signal. And that way you'll know if you're already too late because it's already maxed out. Now I thought this feature was actually pretty cool. It has variable speed sensitivity so that way it could only alert you if you happen to be going over the speed limit so if you're chilling at the speed limit maybe you don't want it to alert you super crazy because you're not speeding so does it matter you don't need to know we also have crystal clear voice alerts so that way you can know exactly what's going on it'll be like ka band detected that way you're like oh ka band what pretty much. And it also supports English and Spanish voice and text, so that's pretty cool. One of the cool things about this detector is they have a no ticket guarantee, so if you happen to get a speeding ticket, they'll actually pay for it. Win-win, right? Now something that takes this radar detector to another level is the fact that you can actually connect a dash cam to it, which is awesome because that way you don't have to have two power cords running. You can have one power source and one mount for your dash cam and the radar detector at the same time. Now we'll take a closer look at this in another video because maybe you don't care, maybe you already have a dash cam, maybe you have a Tesla that already records for you, like I do, but we'll take a look at this because that's actually really cool. So now let's open up this box and take a look at what we got. I'm really excited. Oh, here we go. Congratulations! We trust you will enjoy your high-performance escort detector. If you have any questions, yada, 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 all that good stuff. Okay, this unboxing experience is actually pretty cool. I didn't know it would come in a nice carrying case. 
Although I'm not sure why you need a carrying case for a radar detector. I guess when you take it down, maybe you want to put it in a case to keep it protected. Personally, I don't think I'll ever use it, but it's nice to see. Inside the box, we do have a one year limited warranty. We have a quick reference guide, which you should definitely take a look at. And then we have this nice escort carrying case, which is actually really cool. Although I still don't see when I would ever actually use this. It's got a nice little handle as well as a little lanyard on the side. Inside we have a suction cup that's actually magnetic, which is top tier when it comes to mounting. We have the 12 volt power adapter, which actually has this coiled cable, which could be an issue if it's not long enough to reach to the power outlet. And then we have the Escort Max 360C, which is looking pretty beefy, although looking very cool, and I'm really impressed so far. Up here on the top of the square right here is actually the magnetic connector for the suction cup. So if, as you can see, well, that's actually pretty strong. It goes right into place, holds it very sturdily. That's very good. This is a really strong magnet. And that way you can easily remove it when you get out of the car so you don't invite any thieves into your car while you're away. That's pretty impressive. I like this. We have a bunch of controls here. First button is the sensitivity button, so you can adjust the radar detector between auto, auto knox, auto lock, and highway mode. Of course, highway mode is going to be the most sensitive and detect everything because you're not buying any stores with doors opening and closing. We have the power button in the middle to turn the unit on and off, although it will automatically power on every time you power on your car, that way you don't have to worry about it. We have the brightness button to adjust the OLED display between minimum, medium, max, auto, and dark mode. Personally, I'm going to leave it on auto mode unless it happens to be too bright at night. I don't want to have to worry about it. We do have a volume up and down button to adjust the volume. You know, depending on how loud you want the alerts to be, you can adjust that. We also have a big mute button, which will mute an alert. You can press it three times to lock out a false alert or press it twice while receiving a locked out alert to unlock it. Right here in the middle, we have a mark button to mark a location for future alerts. You press the button twice, volume up and down to select the type of marker, and then press it again to confirm. Then you can press it twice while receiving a marker alert to unmark the alert. Over here on the back, we actually have the laser detector, which will detect all the LiDAR signals. And then over on the front, not only do we have the directional arrows, but we also have the OLED display. This is what you're gonna look at every time you get an alert so you can know what kind of alert you have. It'll also show you over speed alerts, Bluetooth connection status, speed limit data from Bluetooth, as well as from Wi-Fi. And of course, you can see the signal strength of what's being detected. What's nice is the display will actually tell you what mode you're in, as well as how far away you are from red light cameras as well as speed cameras. Now, of course, this is a radar detector for a car and I also have no way of powering it inside of the studio. So we're gonna head out to my car, get this thing set up and take a look at some of the settings. All right, first things first, you're gonna have to go into the app store and get the Escort Live Radar app, make an account and get everything set up that way because you're definitely gonna wanna use the app to get the most out of your radar detector. Once we open up the app, we're gonna make sure our radar detector is connected via Bluetooth, which it is. If it's not connected, you just go into devices and it'll show up under other devices and you'll tap on it to pair it up with your phone. So right here on the home screen, we of course have the map. This is similar to what Waze will get you, except it's built in with the radar and you're actually paying for it every month. But it does come with a one year free trial with the radar detector purchase. As you can see, I'm valid until October 29th, 2021. So now we're gonna go into settings and take a look at some of the radar settings. First things first, we have sensitivity. We can set that to auto, auto no X, highway or auto low key. Auto will be the best option for most people. It'll change the sensitivity based on how fast you're going. And once you hit the highway, it'll be a lot more sensitive because you're going at highway speeds. Auto no X is going to be about the same, except it's going to block out X bands because X bands aren't widely used. Highway made, of course, is going to be the most sensitive. And as you can see, right when I turn it on, we actually picked up a K band somewhere. I'm assuming it might be from the hotel right here in the distance. Then we have auto low key, which is going to be about the same as auto, although it's going to lower the sensitivity when it comes to K band. More often than not, KA band is definitely going to be a cop. K band is a little less likely and then X band is really low. That's crazy, right? When I put on, oh, it's behind me. I wonder what it is. I wonder if there's actually a cop back there. More often than not though, I'm gonna have it on auto unless I'm on a road trip, then I might set it to highway just to be on the safe side. Then we have brightness settings. You can set it to dark, which will completely turn off the display and won't show anything, which personally I'm not gonna like because I wanna know what bands are popping up. The arrows won't even light up in this case. You can set it to minimum to have it in night mode, medium, or maximum. Personally, I'm gonna leave it on auto because it does have a light sensor to adjust it accordingly. Next we have pilot. So that's basically what we're seeing on the screen. We can have the scanning bar, which is up top, which looks really cool, although it can get a bit annoying. So you can turn that off and just have the full word of auto. This one's gonna be entirely up to you. Do you wanna see these bars or do you wanna just see the words? I like the bars for now. And then now things are getting a little bit more complicated. We have meter mode. By default, it's on standard FR1. Standard mode will show you the strongest signal that's being detected along with the signal strength. Standard FR1 is similar, although it'll show both the front and rear antenna signal strength. Standard FR2 will take that, but will actually show you the primary and secondary signal strength and show you which way both of them are coming from. Spec FR1 is the same as standard FR1, except this will actually add the numeric frequency so you can have a bit more information. Same with spec FR2, except it'll show you the primary and secondary signal. Now, X 
expert FR will actually show you up to four signals and show you all their signal strengths and show you which way they're coming from and it'll flash the arrows for the strongest signal. Simple mode is what you're going to use if you don't care about all that jazz. It's basically going to tell you caution if you're going under the speed limit and it detects a signal or slow down if you're speeding and it detects a signal. Personally right now I'm going to leave it on standard FR2 because I don't really care about the frequency but I wouldn't mind seeing the primary and secondary source of radar. Next we have arrow mode. Single mode will light up the arrows blue for the primary source of radar. Multiple will light up the arrows based on your meter mode settings for multiple sources of radar. Front radar will light up blue, rear radar will light up red. And then band is actually probably the best option here. It'll light up for multiple bands as well as having them color coded. X bands will light up green, K bands will light up blue, and laser and KA bands will light up red because those are the most serious. Then we have auto mute mode which will actually dim down the sound after a couple seconds of playing it at the beginning. That way it's not going to be annoying you at full volume the whole time. You can either have that off or set it to low, medium, or high. I'll probably just set it at low for now. Then we have audio tones. Standard is the standard escort alert tones. Mild actually sounds a bit more like a doorbell which can be a little bit less disruptive. And then standard plus will have the standard escort alert tones for the primary source and then additional sources will have a double beep. I'll probably leave it on standard plus for now. And then we have ZR3 mode which actually requires a ZR3 laser jammer which I don't have and if you don't have you might as well just turn this off. Then we have voice. Voice is pretty cool. It'll actually tell you what band is being detected. It'll be like KA band, K band and it'll go bzzz and do all that good stuff. Right now I'm kind of digging it so I'll leave it on for now. Then we have auto power mode. So if you have your radar detector plugged into an always on power source and you don't want it to drain your battery after you get out of your car, you can have it set to automatically turn off after a certain amount of time. If you have any of these options turned on, the screen will actually turn off on the radar detector after 30 minutes of inactivity and then completely power down after your set schedule. Of course, once you get back in your car and start it up, it'll go back to normal. We have units, we can set it to English or metric. Obviously, I'm going to leave it on English because the US is crazy like that. We have the GPS filter, you can turn that on and off. I like having GPS enabled features, so I'll leave that on. We have auto learn, which can be turned on and off. I like to leave that on because if I'm constantly driving by Walmart in the parking lot and the detector keeps going off because of their automatic opening door, I wanted to learn that that's a false alarm and block it out. It does have to pick up the detection about three times before it actually locks it out by itself. And then we have cruise alert. So instead of going haywire when you detect something while you're going under your set speed, it'll just do a double beep to let you know something's there, although you don't really have to worry because you're not speeding. We have overspeed alert. So if you want to make sure you're not going over 70 miles per hour, it'll let you know, hey, you're going over 70 right now, you better chill out. This way you can stop yourself from speeding, even if there isn't any radar detected. We can set our languages to English and Spanish. Very simple. I kind of wish they would have more languages for everybody else, but I guess it is what it is. We have the display color which you can customize based on your car's interior. We have amber, red, green, and blue. Personally, I'm liking blue. We have speed on display, so we can turn that off, and that way it won't tell you how fast you're going, it'll just tell you the amount of voltage you have coming from your power source, but personally, I'd rather see my speed than see that. We have user mode, novice and advanced. Novice will only give you essential information about the alert. Meanwhile, advanced will give you every detail that you might not even need to know. And then down here, we have band settings, which will definitely vary depending on what area you're using your radar detector in. A quick Google search will give you an idea of what you should have on and turned off. Personally, for me, I'm gonna have laser on, of course, KA band on, on, K band on, X band we don't need on, although until I have a bunch of false alerts, I might as well just leave it on. We have TSR, so that's traffic sensor rejection, because there are some roads where they have radar that's being shot down to see how fast traffic's moving, and that can send out a bunch of false alerts for you. So it's good to have that being rejected. Then down here, you can get even more specific and turn off other bands that you don't need based on your country. Although from what I understand, if you want to adjust inside of each band, you have to turn off the band up here. Personally, I'm going to have them all on because I want to be safe no matter what especially if I'm going between states. From what I understand, for KA in the United States, you just need two, five, and eight turned on. Although there won't be any performance hit by having them all on. And then down here at the bottom, we have marker settings. So red light cameras, speed cameras, speed traps, other red light speed cameras, and air patrol alerts. These will basically let you know of areas that have these in use. Air Patrol won't actually tell you if there's an active helicopter checking your speed right now, but if they're known to be using those in that area. So that's always good to have on. And then we can go back to Bluetooth settings. You can have a connection delay if your phone has trouble connecting to multiple sources of Bluetooth at the same time. We have Wi-Fi settings so you can connect to Wi-Fi to update your radar and also set it up to your in-car Wi-Fi hotspot if you like. We have alert tones so you can have alert tones for different things like traffic jams, detours, road hazards, work zones, accidents, air patrol, average speed zones, mobile cameras, speed cameras, red light cameras, police police moving, police stationary, all that good stuff, as well as community radar that got detected by other users. Then we have alert audio, you can have that set to auto or have it route through your phone, which is actually pretty cool if you're playing music through Bluetooth on your car. We have car finder, which in case you lose your car in your parking lot, you'll know where you parked based on where your radar detector was last picked up on GPS. You can disable auto lock, you can have an over speed limit alert, although that gets really annoying really fast, so I'm going to just have that off. Speed units, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. We have day and night mode, I just leave that on auto because obviously why not. Then you can select what your vehicle 
looks like on the map. Arrow, dot, or car. I'll just leave it on an arrow because I'm never going to use it anyways. We have background activity. We can have visual notifications and audible alerts. I'll just leave audible alerts on. And then we have usage analytics, which I guess will send usage to Escort, although personally I don't care. Now that's really all the settings, but there's actually a really cool feature that requires the premium membership, alert history. So it'll actually tell you where it detected radar at and how strong the signal was. And you can even go as far as tapping police spotted, that way it'll notify other drivers that you saw police shooting out their radar. And really that's it. It's extremely easy to set up, especially with the app on your phone. All you have to do is do a quick Google search to find out what types of radar are being used in your area. That way you can turn off which ones you don't need, turn on the ones you do need, and that way you're always gonna be safe. So with all that said and done, we're gonna actually go head out, try to find some cops, cause I don't have a radar to laying around. Normal people don't have radars laying around, do you? Do you? I always wanted one, but I have no reason to actually get one. So we're gonna go try to find some radar, which is always gonna be impossible now that you're looking for them, and see how good this thing actually works in the real world. All right, so I've been using the radar detector now for a little over a month, and it's actually been really good for the most part. Right here, we're actually coming up on a little speed sign, so it's not a cop, but it is detecting a K-band. It detected it really far out. We're about to pass it up. Where is it at? It's right up here. You'll see when it starts flashing. There it is. There it goes. So now it should turn around as we pass it. It's got the right and left, now it's behind us. So it's doing a very good job detecting that. That's the second time I passed it, so it should lock it out the next time I pass it. I could have manually done that, but I like to have it do it by itself automatically. You know, that's really cool. I went on a road trip to California and back on that whole trip both ways. I only saw two total cops and this thing picked up both of them. The first one, it said live stationary cop reported ahead. I was like, wait, what does that even mean? The cop's just chilling there? Turns out he was right there just like it said. Although I guess that only popped up because it was reported by somebody else who has an escort radar detector. Now the second cop I saw, it picked up the KA band, it built up. I was like, yo, where's he at? Turns out he was chasing somebody on the other side because I guess he already hit him with the radar gun and got him. Other than that, no cops on that whole trip. Now around town it's been working very well too. It gives me a good heads up. It gives me a good heads up when I'm approaching a cop. It ramps up and it starts going haywire as soon as we're approaching him. Although there was this one time it picked up a motorcycle cop at the last possible second, I guess. It just started maxing out immediately. So I'm assuming the cop just now put on his radar gun right when I was passing him and I had no idea where he was. But I turned around, he was behind me and I'm not sure if he was coming after me because I was going a little bit too fast, but he ended up talking with some car that was breaking down or something. Here's a little clip of what I recorded as it was happening. Dude, oh shit, my radar is going off like crazy and the cop's right here on his motorcycle behind me. When he's talking to this guy who got out of his car, I don't know what's going on. I thought he was coming after me, but I don't know what's happening. But it's still going off, so I guess he still has a gun on? Other than this, I did get hit by two LiDAR guns, I think. It did go off and it was like laser, all the arrows were flashing. I was like, where, where? I was looking around both times and couldn't find the cop anywhere. And I'm assuming if he's using LiDAR, he has to be within my line of sight if he's hitting me with it. And the funny thing is both times it picked up a laser, I wasn't even moving. So I'm not sure what was going on, but as I drove, it did eventually go away. So I'm assuming it was real unless it was just a false positive. I'm not really sure how that would be possible but I still never saw the cops anywhere. So the radar detector works, it's very good, and I do see the value in having the Escort Live subscription. It gives you a heads up when somebody else picked up radar, even if the cop turned off their radar, so you're like, hey, he might be stationary over there. And it does give you a lot of heads up when you're driving, except for that motorcycle cop. I'm so confused on how that happened. I'm hoping he just turned on the radar gun, because if this thing didn't pick him up and he was shooting off the whole time, we're gonna have a problem. All in all though, no tickets, haven't been pulled over at all, so it seems to be working just fine. And the thing is, once you get one of these, you start realizing there's not as many cops checking for speed as you would think. Because this thing hardly ever goes off for a cop. And I'm guessing that's good because I haven't seen any cops I haven't been pulled over even if I've been speeding while this thing hasn't been going off. Looks like it's working to me. So I could definitely recommend it. If you want a good radar detector, this is a good way to go. It is pricey, but as you can see, it's paying for itself because it's definitely saved me a bunch of times. Now, the only downside I have with it, which 
could be easily fixed is the cable it comes with has that coil on it which is really hard actually pretty much impossible to wire through your car if you're trying to hide the wire so if you want to conceal the wire you're gonna to have to purchase a separate wire that's long and just completely straight or hardwired into your car but other than that this thing's a winner right here I'm really liking it the app is great the subscription might actually be worth it although I don't think I'm gonna be paying for it after my free year expires but you know that's just me because I don't need any more subscriptions so anyways let me know if you're gonna pick one of these up or if you already have one or maybe a different radar detector let me know if you like radar detectors or if you think they're pointless what do you guys think I mean I've used it and it's not pointless because it's definitely picking up cops now if you get hit by lidar you're out of luck but so far it's just been two and that's very few compared to all the ka bands i've been picking up so i'm really curious if you've been using one of these long term what you guys thoughts are because right now i'm really liking it fingers crossed knock on wood hopefully it keeps working well and i don't end up with any tickets